let us start our chapter number five, which is dimensional analysis and modeling uh, from the book or dimensional analysis and simplitude. So uh, let us char start chapter number five. So chapter number five is all about dimensions, how to derive dimensions, what are the units, what is a non-dimensional parameter, how to derive non-dimensional parameters, okay? In this chapter, we are going to review the concept of dimensions and units. We are going to then review the fundamental principles of dimensional homogeneity. So first we are going to see what is a dimension and what are the primary dimensions what are units okay then we are going to learn about uh, dimensional analysis or what we call homogeneity whether an equation or a dimension is homogeneous or non-homogeneous so homogeneity m o h o m o g n i t y okay then the third is we are going to see what is similarity, whether a dimension can have a similar uh, units or formulas as that of model or prototype. So this is something which we are going to learn in similarity. Similarity topic. <clears throat> okay. And the, the fourth thing which we are going to learn is Buckingham Pi theorem. Buckingham Pi theorem. So in Buckingham Pi theorem, we are going to learn how do we derive non-dimensional parameters. Okay, so we are going to start step by step. First, you are going to start with a dimension. What is a dimension and what is a unit? So I'm going to open my slides and we will go for the first slide. So the objective of, of this current uh, uh, chapter is basically to explain the concept and applications of dimensional analysis. Okay. So then the second thing is they are going to learn and tell us what is Buckingham Pi theorem. So this is coming quite uh, later on in our chapter. So we are going to learn Buckingham Pi theorem in our next class. And then to explain and apply geometrical, kinematic, and dynamatic similarity. This is something which we are going to learn today. So these are more or less the objectives of our uh, chapter number five. <clears throat> this picture, it may seem like this is a toy boat or something. If you look at this picture, it's a very small boat. Looks like a toy boat, right? And it is on in a very small pool. But this is a model of United States destroyer Navy ship. Okay, this is not a toy. This is a model for United States Navy destroyer, Navy fleet destroyer. And what is happening is that this Navy destroyer has been scaled down to a very small model. This is a very small model of the actual ship. And what they are doing is they have put this model in a test bench. Okay, they have put this in a testing tunnel and they are testing the properties of this very small model and then they are going to predict the properties of a larger actual ship. So what happens here is that, let's say this is an actual ship, okay, United States destroyer, okay. This is an actual ship. This actual ship is called prototype. So the name of this actual ship ship or any actual actual car on an actual testing rig something is called prototype P R O T O T Y P E prototype okay and if i am going to make a very small model okay then a small model of this is called model okay so we have prototype and we have model okay okay so what happens is that i can test 
I can test test model, okay, and predict properties of prototype. Predict properties of prototype. Okay, so what I can do is that I don't need to make this. I know no need to build this whole ship. No need to build this ship. No need to build the ship. What I can do is make a very small model. Make a very small model. Okay, so let's say that my model has a velocity coming of 100. Okay, so using non dimensional parameters pi, I can predict the properties of ship very easily. So this is called similarity. This condition is called similarity. And the way to predict this similarity is using non-dimensional parameter, non-dimensional, non-dimensional parameter. And non-dimensional parameter is denoted by pi, pi. Okay. So this is something which we are going to learn and which we are going to see in this chapter. So the, the, the reason why we have this uh, uh, model is that we do our testing on small models and then we predict the properties of an actual ship. That is why the, these United States guys are basically building a small model, putting it in a testing rig. Okay, they have, this is a testing rig, there is some water and then the, uh, the water will be flowing or there will be some waves in this rig okay and then they are going to predict the properties of the actual ship using this model so this is the concept okay so so let us let us start dimensions and unit let us start our slide for dimensions a simpler one let's start with the simple thing okay what is dimension What is dimension? What is unit? Okay. What are seven primary dimensions? Okay. And what are the three most important dimensions? Okay, so what is dimension? What is unit? What are the seven primary dimension? And what are the three most primary important dimensions? So let's have a look. A dimension basically is a measure of physical quantity without numerical values. That's very simple. And a unit is basically a way to assign number. So let's say that my dimension is mass. Then Okay, whereas mass is basically a primary dimension. It is a measure of physical quantity. Now there are seven primary dimensions. Okay, what are those seven primary dimensions? Mass, length, time, temperature, current. amount of matter and amount of light. Okay, so we have seven 
primary dimension mass length time temperature current amount of light and amount of matter but for the sake of simplicity of course we are going to use only mass length and time so in this course we are only going to work with mass length and time mass is denoted by denoted by capital m length is denoted by capital l and time is denoted by capital t so we are going to play with these ml t three important dimensions okay so so in the example it's given here dimension of a force so let's take a look at the dimension of a force force is equals to mass into acceleration okay what is mass mass is capital m acceleration is distance in uh, velocity over time so it's uh, length per unit time square okay so we can write force is m l t t goes up and becomes minus 2 so that force in terms of primary dimension is mass length time minus 2 where mass has a one length is also one and t is minus 2 so we can write dimension in this form what is acceleration acceleration is length t minus 2 okay so this is how we define primary dimensions uh, so there are seven primary dimensions which i've discussed already mass length time mlt temperature is denoted by theta current is amperes okay amount of light is candela c or cd amount of matter is uh, n or more okay but in this course we are going to learn the first three dimensions okay <clears throat> so let's move to next slide so there is one very easy numerical okay example number 7.1 okay in example 7.1 it is saying that an engineer is studying how some insects are able to walk on water so if you see this insect okay this insect is basically able to walk on water why it is able to walk on water because of its properties of lowering the surface tension this insect is called a water strider water strider okay a water strider is basically an insect that can walk on water due to surface tension this property surface tension is very important so what it is saying the it is saying that an engineer is studying how some insects are able to walk on water as shown in figure a fluid property of important in this problem is surface tension denoted by sigma s so surface tension is denoted by sigma greek letter sigma s okay <clears throat> which has a dimension of force per unit length so sigma s is equals to force per unit length okay write the dimensions and surface tension in terms of primary dimensions so in the exam i will be asking you guys write the primary dimension of this equation write the primary dimensions dimensions okay so what you need to do is you need to write in the form of m l t remember 
you need to write or convert this formula into MLT. Okay. So since sigma s is equals to force per unit length, okay, we know force is m one l one t minus two. Okay, whole divided by length l. Okay, so l l cancel out. So sigma. Okay, the dimension sigma is equals to we put the curly brackets m t minus two. Or m over t to the power two. So this is my answer for getting or evaluating primary dimensions. So my lec my lecture part for primary dimensions is finished. Primary dimensions is finished. Now at this point. You guys know that if I give you a formula of force or surface tension or acceleration or weight or maybe viscosity, then you can calculate. You are able to calculate the primary dimensions of that formula. Okay. Now that you know that you can calculate the primary dimensions, what are the rules for dimensional homogeneity? Okay. Let's move to second topic. Dimensional. homogeneity <clears throat> what is dimensional homogeneity okay now the you guys have learned and we know an old saying that you cannot you cannot add apples and oranges together Okay, in the figure also you can see we have got two apples and then you have got two oranges, but you cannot add them because they are inherently different. Their dimension is different. If you've got an Apple mobile and then you've got a sample Samsung mobile, you cannot add them. So Apple plus Samsung will not be give you Apple or will, it will not give you Samsung. Okay, this is because their their characteristics are inherently different. Okay. So the law of dimensional homogeneity states that every term, every apple, okay, every term should have same dimensions. So I can add apples together, or I can add oranges together, but I cannot add apples and oranges together. Okay. So this law states that every additive terms, every additive. Term in an equation must have the same dimensions. Quotation. Okay. So every additive term in an equation must have same dimensions. This is this is very important. So we are going to take a look at one example. So the example here in this example we are given an equation. This equation is that the change in energy of a system is equals to the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus The change in potential energy, delta means change. Now, according to our dimensional homogeneity concept or principle, this equation, in this equation, all the terms should have same primary dimensions. If they have same primary dimensions. Then only this equation is valid, and each individual term can add up. If this equation is dimensionally homogeneous, it means that it has same primary dimensions for each parameter. So let's take a look at how each of them is same. So energy. So if we look here, you can see the equation. Delta U is called. Internal energy of a system, delta U, is equals to mass 
into u2 minus u1 okay mass has a unit this is equals to and u is basically energy per unit mass u1 or u2 is energy per unit mass okay so my uh, this is mass multiply by energy per unit mass okay mass mass cancel each other out i am left with energy okay what is the unit of energy energy is equals to force multiplied by length what is force m l t minus 2 multiplied by l both 1 1 okay so it becomes m l 2 t minus 2 this is the unit of energy okay so my delta u also is equals to energy is equals to m l 2 t minus 2 okay now let's move to let's pick kinetic energy delta ke okay kinetic energy is equals to half m v2 square minus v1 square okay so basically the unit of mass is m and the unit of velocity is meter per second so length per time and this is square whole square okay so this becomes m l square over t square is equals to m l t square minus 2 so my kinetic energy units are also same let's move to potential energy delta p e is equals to density sorry mass into gravity into i2 minus i2 z2 minus z1 is i2 minus i1 what is the unit of mass it is m what is gravity meter per second square so l over t square and what is the dimension of z is l so this becomes m l square t minus 2 so you can notice that the unit for potential energy is same as kinetic energy this is same as internal energy and this is equals to same as energy okay it means that our equation is valid this is a valid equation which means that it is dimensionally homogeneous next slide so now that i have driven the dimensions or primary dimension of energy in a similar way uh, in the slide in the table you can see that other primary dimensions of different formulas are given areas primary dimension is meter square or l square velocity is meter per second means l1 t minus 1 t inverse then volume flow rate mass flow rate force work power density viscosity pressure pressure is not given newton per meter square so if i want to uh, obtain the primary dimension of pressure pressure is force per unit area force is ml t minus 
whole divided by area is L square. So the primary dimension of pressure is M L minus one T minus two. <clears throat> so in the exam, I, I will just give you drive uh, primary dimension of maybe one of these formulas. So quite simple. <clears throat> so let's move to next slide. Now this is similarity now. Now we move to similarity. We have covered primary dimensions. We have covered dimensional homogeneity. Now we are going to move to similarity. What is similarity? Okay. Similarity. <clears throat> As I said earlier, that we have got prototype and then we have got a model. A prototype is something which we see in, in our real life applications, let's say a real car. But if I'm going to make a very small scale model of that a prototype, then it's called a model. Using the properties of model, I can predict the properties of prototype using the properties of prototype i can predict the properties of a model okay why what is why we make small models small models are made basically to save time okay making a small model is easier compared to making an actual product so it is going to save time it is going to save testing space I can test this uh, this ship basically in a small space, okay. But if I have got a very large ship, then I need a, a lot of space to test that ship. So that is why similarity concept help us to make very small things and predict the properties of large things. Large things being prototype, and small things means model, okay. So how to compare these things? How to compare the properties of prototype or model and how to predict the properties of prototype using the properties of a small model, okay? That is when similarity concept comes into place. So that is why in real life engineering, equations are basically not known. I don't know what is the equation to solve this ship. So sometimes we need to do experiments to determine the properties and to determine the uh, equations for the ship. To do experiments, I want to reduce the size, reduce the cost, save space, etc. Okay, so that is why similarity concepts comes into place. In most experiments to save time, money, tests are performed on geometrically scaled model. So this model, this model is geometrically geometrically scaled model this term is very very important and in the assumptions for numericals in the assumptions you need to write this statement you need to write that assuming this model is geometrically scaled okay once you write this assumption then you will go you are going to get full marks for solving the numerical so this assumption is very important that uh, the model is geometrically scaled. Okay, that is very important. <clears throat> prototype. Is very large as we know. Okay, how to def how, how to say uh, is very large. We say it is full scale. Full scale. So if in the exam I tell you I have a full scale object, it means it is prototype. If I tell you I have a geometrically scaled model, SC, this is C, 
I have a geometrically scale mod, scale object, then it is called a model. Okay. So in such cases, care must be taken to properly scale the results. We introduce here a powerful technique called dimensional analysis. Now, what are the objectives of dimensional analysis? There are three primary objectives and purpose for doing this dimensional analysis. Number one is to generate non-dimensional parameter. This non-dimensional parameter. Now you will say what is non-dimensional parameter, right? But you guys have already learned in fluid mechanics what is non-dimensional parameter. Obviously, non-dimensional parameter means a parameter which does not have any dimension. Okay, so non-dimensional. non-dimensional parameter our objective is to generate non-dimensional parameter what is non-dimensional parameter something which has no dimension and in chapter number three and in chapter number four you learned about a parameter called reynolds number okay let's say Reynolds number is 2400 but it has no dimension no unit no dimension. Renault number has no unit and no dimension. It means it is non-dimensional parameter. Similarly, friction factor F. F for laminar was 64 over Re. Okay. So this is also non-dimensional. Okay, so what this similarity rule say is that we need to generate non-dimensional parameter so that we can predict the values of prototype by using the values of uh, non-dimensional para uh, non parameters of model. So if I know the non-dimensional, let's say Reynolds number of my model, then I can predict the Reynolds number of prototype. This is what it is saying. This, uh, this line number one. Okay. To obtain scaling loss so that the prototype performance can be predicted from model performance. What is scaling law? Number two is scaling law. <clears throat> scaling law is very simple. It means that let's say uh, my ship, my ship prototype, okay, is basically 10 times larger than my ship model. It means that this my scale, when I talk about my scale, then my ship prototype is 10 times scale than ship model. So this is basically a simple scale. Okay. How much times your prototype or model is scaled? Okay. So in the exam, in the question, this scale number is given. In the question, the scaling is given. So the more lesser is my size of model, easy it is for me to test. Okay. So the more smaller the scale, the, the higher the scale, the smaller the size of model. Smaller the size of model, then I can uh, change, I, then I can predict the values. Okay. So scale, first thing is non-dimensional parameter then scale i need to know what is the scale okay then number three to predict trends in a relationship between parameters okay so number three number three is relationships relationship between 
parameters. This one is something also you already know. Let's say if I talk about hydrostatic pressure, okay, hydrostatic pressure increases with respect to height, okay. So if here I have uh, height and here is my pressure, okay. So as the height increases, the pressure also increases. So this is basically relationship. relationship okay so similarly i can define relationship between prototype and model also okay so these are the primary purpose for doing dimensional analysis number one is generate non-dimensional parameters such as a raw number fraud number nestle number number two is to obtain scale loss scale loss is basically given so it's not to obtain it's usually given in the numerical. And number three is to predict trends. And this is something which we can predict. So this was more or less about this slide. Now, a very important thing is similarity. How many types of similarities? Types of similarities. OK. Before discussing the technique of dimensional analysis, we first explain the concept of dimensional analysis or the principle of similarity. Types of similarity come from principle of similarity. Principle of similarity, okay? To have a similarity, to have similarity between model and prototype, prototype and model, if I want to have similarity between model and prototype, I need to fulfill three condition. I need to fulfill three condition. Condition one, condition two, condition three. Condition number one is geometric similarity. Number two is kinematic. And number three is dynamic. I cannot get similarity unless and until these three conditions are fulfilled. The first condition is called geometric similarity. Condition number one. Geometric similarity means that the model must have the same shape as prototype. It says that the shape of prototype and model should be same. Okay, geometric similarity is states that the model must be the same shape as prototype, but can be scaled by some constant scale factor. The shape can be same, okay, but the size can be scaled by a factor X. It could be two times, it could be three times, it could be four times, it could be 10 times. So we are allowed scaling but the shape should be same, okay? The second condition is kinematic similarity. Kinematic similarity states that the velocity at any point in a flow must be proportional by a constant factor to a velocity at the corresponding point in a prototype flow. So the velocity should be proportional okay and specifically for kinematic velocity uh, the similarity for kinematic similarity the velocity at the point must scale in magnitude and must point in the same direction so the velocity magnitude 
which can be scaled by 2, 3, 10 and its direction should be same. Direction same. Okay. So let's say if I've got uh, my model and this is my prototype. Okay. Then the velocity direction of the air should be same. And the magnitude also should be same. This is model, this is prototype. Geometric similarity is called length scale equivalence. And kinematic similarity is called time scale equivalence. Okay. Let's move to dynamic similarity. Dynamic similarity is achieved when all the forces in the model, okay, when all the forces in the model flow scale by a constant factor of corresponding forces in the prototype. So this is called force. Okay, so the force should be also proportional and should be scaled by some factors. Okay, so geometric length base kinematic velocity base dynamic force base when all these conditions are similar then similarity is achieved between prototype and model and using the properties of model i can predict the properties of prototype so any questions let me know otherwise i will proceed <clears throat> now, now that I know what is similarity, okay, I need to understand what is non-dimensional parameter, okay, non-dimensional parameter, let's say Reynolds number, Floyd's number, friction factor, these are non-dimensional parameters, okay. non-dimensional parameter i need a relationship between model and prototype to have a relationship between model and prototype i need non-dimensional parameter okay non-dimensional parameter is denoted by a function called pi okay this is pi this is denoted by pi okay greek letter pi in general the dimensional analysis problem there is only one pi that we call uh, dependent and it is given in notation pi one okay so let's say i have this boat okay air is flowing very fast on the boat okay air has a velocity v okay air has a density rho this boat has a length of l okay and uh, uh, so so what i know is that these velocity density length are independent variables okay and Reynolds number re is dependent variable because it is dependent on rho vd over mu so we have dependent variables and we have independent variables independent variables do not depends on anything and dependent variable Reynolds number something depends on the values of independent variable okay so when we talk about dependent variables okay dependent variables they are denoted by pi 1 dependent variable is denoted by pi 1 and independent variables
is don't can be denoted by pi to pi three and so on until pi to the power k. Okay. Now we know the dependent variable pi one is a function of other independent variables. So we can write pi one is a function of other independent variables pi two, pi three, and so on until pi k. Okay. <clears throat> so to ensure complete similarity. the model and prototype must be geometrically similar and all the independent and all the independent groups must match between model and prototype okay what does it means it means that i have my small ship i have my large ship okay then this has pi 1 model and this will be denoted by non dimensional independent variable uh, sorry pi 1 was uh, dependent so pi 1 is dependent and this is pi 1 dependent for prototype similarly pi 2 model pi 3 pi 2 prototype pi 3 model pi 3 prototype and so on until pi k model so on until pi p uh, pi k prototype okay so what it says is that these non dimensional parameters should be equal due to similarity rule so similarity rule says that if pi 2 model is equals to pi 3 prototype if pi k model is equals to pi k prototype for independent variables then pi 1 m should be equals to pi 1 prototype It, it, this is very simple so if i have a reynolds number for uh, my model then it i i can equate it with my reynolds number of prototype something like this very simple <clears throat> so i have to slide next slide okay so i have got a very large car here you can see this is a prototype and the small car is a model okay now you can see that the air is coming at a velocity and striking this large car okay i want to i want to basically predict the properties of this large scale car so what i am going to do is i am going to make a toy car or a small car okay model car and i am going to use similar conditions and then i am going to predict the properties of a large car okay so my car has a length of model for my model car the length of the car is lm for model car the velocity is vm the dynamic viscosity is mu m and the density of the air is row m okay so uh, once again it is saying that to save money we test small models okay we can predict the properties of full scale with properties matching the prototype using geometric similarity and etc okay now before starting they have given the formula already okay they have given the formula formula number 1 is that that pi 1 is a function of pi 2 pi 1 is dependent pi 2 is independent okay what is pi 1 they have given pi 1 is equals to 
F D. This is called drag force divided by density, velocity square, L square, and pi two is Reynolds number. Pi two is equals to rho v l over <laughs> mu. Remember that in our previous course we were doing problems for piping. In piping, the Reynolds number is rho v d over mu. Okay, this is d, and remember that d was called characteristics length. Characteristic length. Okay, so for piping, characteristics length is diameter, but for our car, characteristics length is the length of the car. Okay, so d is characteristics length for pipe, it is diameter, and for our car it is length. Anyway, so we are given two dimensional parameters, pi one and pi two. Okay. and the relationship between pi1 and pi2 is also given <laughs> this is called reynolds number basically so i can write pi2 or i can write reynolds number because uh, many scientists scientist they basically identified these number so these pi's were given their names so for reynold reynold was given reynold was the scientist who basically identified this number dimensional less number so that is why the name of pi2 was given to reynolds number that is why there are many numbers which are given to uh, other scientists to scientists and when we talk about pi1 here pi1 is basically coefficient of drag formula this you will learn in fluid mechanics too okay pi1 is coefficient of drag coefficient of drag is equals to fd this is drag force fd is called drag force how much force of drag is acting on a body divided by density into velocity square into length square so not much difference between the two formulas except for the drag force then some square of variables anyways so this is what it is given okay so using the formulas given now i can define or identify similarities between these model and prototype so let's take a look at example example number 7.5 so what is this example saying similarity between model and prototype cars so this example is all about cars the aerodynamic drag the drag force which we just learned the aerodynamic drag of a new sports car is to be predicted at a speed of 50 miles per hour so i have got this model car in using model car i want to predict the speed of the car okay so the aerodynamic drag of a new sp sports car is to be predicted at a speeds of 50 mile per hour at an air temperature of 25 degrees centigrade automotive engineers build one fifth scale model so this one fifth scale is geometrical similarity or a geometrical scale okay so one fifth scale model has to be prepared it means that if the length of my prototype is l then the length of my model will be one fifth of the prototype okay so automotive engineers build one fifth scale model of a car to test in a wind tunnel so this is basically a wind tunnel okay it is winter so now the conditions are different and the wind tunnel is located in an unheated building so i don't have any heating as well so my temperature has changed so i am going to test my model on different temperature but i will predict the uh, prototypes uh, properties at a different temperature that is also something i can do so i test my model car on a different temperature but i can predict the properties of my prototype at a different temperature as well so the models temperature is different models velocity is different models uh, scale is different uh, i mean the size 
so i can predict the properties of model sorry uh, prototype using uh, testing conditions and similarity anyways so it is winter and the wind tunnel is located in an unheated building the temperature of the wind tunnel air is about 5 degrees centigrade determine how fast the engineer should run the wind tunnel in order to achieve similarity between model and prototype okay so let's go to so this is basically a wind tunnel section i have got this car a drag balance is used this is a drag balance okay it's like a treadmill for car so my car is basically running but uh, the treadmill treadmill is also running so a drag balance is used in a wind tunnel to measure the aerodynamic drag of a body when the testing automobile models <coughs> a moving belt so here i've got a belt okay and then this car is running on a belt a moving belt belt is also often added to the floor of the wind tunnel to simulate the moving ground from car's frame of reference okay so what are the assumptions these are the air conditions given and then we need to first do assumption compressibility of the air is negligible okay the wind tunnels were walls are far enough okay so the wind tunnel walls are far enough because in real condition when i am driving a car there are no walls okay i am driving in an open air so i am predicting that in the wind tunnel also my walls are far enough so that they are not affecting the properties then condition number 3 is that the mod model is geometrically similar that is very important for you to write the model is geometrically similar to the prototype then number 4 the wind tunnel has a moving belt to simulate the ground under the car so this is something that we have to uh, assume so now let's uh, move to solution <clears throat> so let's write what is given and assumptions so given what is given is that uh, so the temperature for my model is 5 degrees centigrade okay the temperature for my prototype which i want to know the properties is 25 degrees centigrade okay i am testing this my fluid is air okay so using tables using property tables i need to predict the density of air for model and density of air for prototype this is something i can get from the table also i can get the dynamic visco oh, sorry yeah dynamic viscosity of my model and dynamic viscosity of my air from the table as well okay <clears throat> so so let's move to the solution and it's important to write assumptions as well assumption number 1 is incompressible number 2 is geometrically similar number 3 is wall effect negligible and number 4 is this uh, drag balance drag balance same as road conditions actual road conditions okay so let's move to the solution so using the table i can get the properties of fluid so at 25 degrees centigrade the air density is 1.184 and at 5 degrees centigrade the air density is 1.269 1.269 and the density for my uh, the dynamic viscosity is 1.849 1.849 and uh, 1.75 1.754 1.754 1.754 1.754 1.754 
okay now renold number for model is equals to rho v l over mu model 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 renold number for prototype is equals to rho v l over mu this is prototype 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 and prototype okay also i know that the length of model is five times the length sorry is one fifth of prototype so length of model is lp divided by 5 okay i know the density i know the uh, dynamic viscosity i know the model length in terms of prototype i know this also i know uh, viscosity prototype i know the length prototype okay and given is that the speed of uh, the model velocity velocity prototype given is 50 miles per hour okay so using condition of similarity okay using condition of similarity pi 2m they 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 have denoted renolds number as pi 2m okay so this is renold number model and pi 2p is equals to renold number prototype okay so under equation of similarity pi 2m is equals to pi 2p it means renold number model is equals to renold number prototype okay <coughs> so this implies that velocity model is equals to vp over multiply by uh something which is given in this example mu m over mu p multiply by density of prototype over density of model and the ratio of length which is lp over lm okay so now you can you know that uh, at which velocity your car should run for the model so when i am going to put the values i will get 2 to 1 miles per hour okay so to predict the values sorry to to have similarity okay if my velocity of my uh, prototype is 50 if velocity of prototype is 50 then to obtain condition of similarity i need to run my model at 221 mile per hour okay So to ensure similarity, the wind tunnel should be run at 221 miles per hour. And note that uh, we were not giving the actual length, right? So the value of length was was not given. Just scale was given, one fifth. Still using scale, we can determine the properties. So this was quite simple uh, similarity uh, formula in. rules this was example number 1 so we are going to do another example and then we will wrap up this lecture uh, any questions so far no then with example number 7.6 okay example 7.6
this is basically a continuation of previous example okay it is same thing now previously we only uh, in the previous example we calculated pi 2 for model and prototype right which was reynolds number and now in this example we are going to calculate uh, fd which is drag force and this is normal dimensional parameter pi 1 okay so now in this example we are going to calculate pi 1 for model and prototype so let's move to this example number 2 so example number 2 is a follow up of the previous example suppose the engineers run the wind tunnels at 221 mile per hour to achieve similarity between the model so now i have the similarity between the model and prototype okay the aerodynamic drag force on the model car is measured with a drag balance okay this is the same drag balance okay several drag readings are recorded and the average drag force of the model is 94.3 newtons so on the model average drag force on the model okay how much force is acting on the model is 94.3 newtons okay predict the aerodynamic drag force on the prototype so they want to know what is the aerodynamic drag force on the prototype okay something so this is related to pi 1 so we are going to use the formula of pi 1 okay <clears throat> so pi 1 model pi 1 prototype okay <clears throat> this is force drag force we need to predict over rho v square l square okay model 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 and for prototype f d p whole divided by rho p v square p l square p okay so let's equate to we know that it is similarity we have achieved similarity so let's equate them pi 1 is equals to pi 1 model similarity so what we know we know uh, the drag force is given the drag force for uh, model fd model is given which is 94.3 newton what we want need to calculate we need to predict the drag force on prototype this is something unknown okay so i know models drag force i know the density i know the velocity which i have calculated previously i know the ratio of length then i know want to calculate this parameter one unknown i know the density velocity length everything is known so when we are going to equate them we can calculate the velocity of sorry drag force f p p can be calculated okay this is equals to f d m density p over density m velocity p over velocity m whole square and length p over length m whole square so when i'm going to put the values the drag force on the prototype is equals to 103 newtons <clears throat> so if i know the drag force on my model then i can determine the drag force on my prototype using the condition of similarity and non dimensionalness parameter <coughs> very simple <coughs> so this was the answer now we will look at the last slide of this lecture here they are saying that if a water tunnel is used instead of a wind tunnel to test the one fifth scale model the water tunnel speed required to achieve similarity so let's say that 
I replace replace uh, air with water. If I replace air with water, then what will happen? Okay, so quite simple. I will use the properties of water. Okay, the density, the viscosity, <coughs> and everything. So, so when when they did the calculation, okay, and and this is uh, done on the model only. So, so the air, uh, we use air for testing our uh, prototype, but we use water for testing our model. Okay, so in the formula, we just use density of water and dynamic viscosity of water for model only. That's it. So in the formula, we just replace uh, here the density of water, 998 kilogram per meter cube. And using this formula, we got the velocity V is equals to 16.1 miles per hour. 16.1 miles per hour. Okay, so I can change the fluid also when testing model and prototype. So what does it tell us? One advantage of water tunnel is that the required water tunnel speed is much lower than the required for wind tunnel using the same size. So you can see that in the previous example, the air speed was 221 mile per hour. So if I want to achieve similarity, I need to put my air at such a high speed. So what I can do is I can replace it with water to get a speed of 16.1. So I can put my car under water and then I will uh, put water at 16.1 mile per hour. Okay. And using water, I can test my model and predict the properties of prototype. This is also, this is something that can be done also. So in the, if you see in the previous slide, uh, 221, so velocity of model I need my air to be running at 221 mile per hour. That's too fast. So even normal cars uh, run, it's so difficult to run on highway at 221 mile per hour. So what I want to do is to make my testing easy for model. I can put, rather than air, I can put water inside. When I put water inside, I can just run my water at 16.1 mile per hour. And then using this 16.1 mile per hour, I can fit it the drag force or other properties of my uh, model. <clears throat> so this was all dimensional analysis and similarity. Okay. Uh, we saw that pi's uh, are equal when similarity is achieved. Okay. This is also saying that similarity can be achieved even when the model fluid is different than the prototype. So this is a very, very important uh, statement. Okay. So, so this was in today's lecture, this was all about uh, dimensions. So we learned about dimensions, we learned about units, we learned about dimensional homogeneity, we learned about non-dimensional parameter ND, we learned about uh, similarity, okay? And in the next section, we are going to learn about Buckingham Pi theorem. The last topic, of the last chapter. Okay, in this Buckingham Pi theorem, we are going to learn how to derive this pi. We got this pi rho v d over mu, right? This non-dimensional, this is non-dimensional parameter. But how to derive this formula? How to get this formula? Okay. So we, in, in this examples, this rho vd or mu was given, right? But how we got rho vd or mu? We are going to learn how to calculate or how to determine non-dimensional parameters using this Buckingham Pi theorem 